good morning. It's half past eight in the morning on a Saturday morning towards the end of July and I'm on Interstate 66 heading out from Washington DC to Shenandoah National Park out in rural Virginia. Shenandoah is home to the 105 mile long uh, Skyline Drive which winds along the ridge of part of the Blue Ridge Mountains which themselves form part of the Appalachian Mountain chain. The park's also home to some fantastic hiking, uh, so that's what I'm going to go check out this weekend. The park is long and narrow, overlooking the Shenandoah Valley to the west, as seen here, and the Piedmont region of Virginia to the east. And my first hike of the weekend is going to be to Compton Peak. Uh, this is going to be about 2.4 miles with a little over 800 feet of elevation gain. And what's really cool about walking along here is this is actually a section of the Appalachian Trail, a very well known uh, long distance hiking trail. This is approximately the summit of Compton Peak, but with so much tree cover, there really isn't much to be seen here. Uh, there are much better views to be had at an overlook a little bit further along the trail. And this is the real prize on this hike. This is columnar jointing. This is where lava has seeped up through cracks in the earth formed as the earth's pulled apart. And as it's cooled, it's created these hexagonal shapes. Uh, it was originally a black basalt, but over the years has metamorphized into a rock called greenstone. So I've come down here to the Matthews Arm campground area um, because this is where I can hike out to a waterfall called Overall Run Falls and it should be up to about 93 feet tall when it's in flow and they told me at the visitor centre this morning that due to recent rain there's a reasonable chance it will be flowing so let's go see. If you do not like snakes, then you will need to close your eyes for the next sequence of shots. They are pretty graphic. So snakes in three, two, one, now. These are two male timber rattlesnakes. Although this behavior is often confused with courtship or mating, it's actually a form of non-violent combat, most likely over a female who may well be lurking nearby. These snakes were almost entirely oblivious to the growing number of people around them, their position in the middle of the trail forming a very effective blockade. Only when their fight took them to the side of the trail did people feel confident to pass them. Okay, and you can open your eyes again. There are two falls here, a 29 feet fall seen here, and a larger 93 feet fall, which could only be glimpsed through the trees. Shenandoah splits into three sections because of a couple of gaps running through the ridge with major roads running through them. That's the northern section up here, a central section here, and then a southern section down here. Yesterday I explored the northern section and today I'm exploring a number of trails in the central section and the first one is here at Hawkesbill which is the highest peak in the park. And again the route starts with a section of the Appalachian Trail. They call these talus slopes formed from boulders which presumably in the past have uh, uh, fallen down after erosion and, and other forces. Uh, not quite a scree slope but certainly not something that's easy to walk over.
The trail started taking me around the north of the summit in a fairly level route and having come round to kind of the southwest corner I'm now going up a slightly steeper, not too bad, but slightly steeper, a few hundred metres uh, to take me to the peak. And after all that walking in trees with limited view, which frankly I find a little bit tedious sometimes, it's nice to merge up here on the summit with a fantastic view over the Shenandoah Valley to the west of the ridge here. I've been told there's a baby bear somewhere uh, up around here. Um, it was here a little while ago, so it's pretty unlikely that it'll still be here and I'll see it, and I don't know exactly where it is, but I'm heading back up to the summit to see, uh, see if I can spot it. This is a black bear foraging for berries, flowers, grasses, and anything else it can find to eat. Bear sightings are common in Shenandoah. One hiker I met had already seen six so far that morning. So as you can probably hear by all the traffic, this is a busy spot, a very popular trail down to uh, one of the easiest waterfalls to see in the park. So I'm gonna head now down to Dark Hollow Falls. And this next hike is down to a place called Rapidan or Rapidan, I don't know how to pronounce it, Camp, which used to be called uh, Camp Hoover in honour of President Herbert Hoover who used to uh, come here to relax. Hoover chose this site for his retreat because it was close to Washington DC, had excellent trout fishing and was at a sufficient elevation to escape mosquitoes. In effect, it was a forerunner to the current presidential retreat, Camp David in Maryland. This is one of three cabins that survives. This is the Prime Minister cabin, and it's where British Prime Minister Macdonald stayed uh, when he was visiting and relaxing with President Hoover. Although we see wooden cabins here today, the first permanent structures here uh, were actually five wooden floored tents. And um, what they did was they actually built the porches, the roofs, the walls around these tents until there was no tent actually left. Uh, although the name stuck and they were still called the five tents. And the last hike of the day is to Stony Man. And this is really cool because I can actually start this from where I'm staying. So I can actually walk from my cabin, do the, do the hike and then get back to my cabin afterwards. So let's go. The blue blazes on the trees that mark the path uh, are used to show pretty much any walking path in this area. But the white ones are reserved to show the Appalachian Trail. So yet again, I find myself on the Appalachian Trail. Stony Man is the second highest peak in the park at 4,011 feet, and like the slightly higher Hawksville summit, has great views towards the west. The easy hike and close proximity to Skyland Resort makes this a very popular spot. This morning I didn't even have to go hiking to find a bear. Um, just behind me, moving around in the undergrowth, uh, is one of I spotted this solitary bear while I was walking from my cabin to the cafe to get breakfast. I first spotted it sniffing around some bins. It then proceeded up the hill, foraging in the undergrowth as it went. Probably startled by this bear, a cub shot up this tree, rapidly getting to the thin branches at the very top. It was pursued by its mother, who sensibly knew she couldn't follow the cub along the thin branches. I don't know whether her purpose was to try to retrieve the cub from the tree, or to protect the cub from the solitary bear, but she remained in this spot halfway up the tree trunk for over 20 minutes. 
During this time, the cub appeared to be unsure about coming down, tentatively placing its paws further down the thin branch it was sitting on before withdrawing to the relative safety of a junction of several branches. Eventually, the mother climbed down to the ground, rapidly followed by her cub, and the two of them wandered off into the undergrowth. So having started my day with that uh, great sighting of bears, um, I'm now going to do a couple more hikes. My plan had been to head down to the southern section of the park today, but the weather forecast is for some thunder showers, so I don't really want to be doing very long hikes uh, you know, away from the car. So what I'm going to do is do a few shorter hikes. I'm actually back in the central section, uh, back near Big Meadow, and I can see the cloud kind of falling in around me. Maybe I'll see it in shot. And I'm going to go head down to Lewis Falls. So the sun has just come out and it looks like it's actually just going back in again. Um, but I'm going to do a very short hike up to Black Rock Summit. And the sun has come back out now, which is beautiful. And at the same time the trail emerges onto this rocky talus slope. And you can see it's nearly at the top. That's pretty much I think the summit of the mountain. And then to the right of the trail, it disappears way off down into the distance with that beautiful valley across the other side. Gorgeous. This summit is very easily reached and arguably has one of the best panoramic views of any peak in Shenandoah. The trail itself doesn't quite reach the summit, but a quick scramble over the talus provides an alternative route to the top. I've just left the park and pretty much as I crossed the uh, the boundary a few spots of rain started hitting the windscreen so I think that was good timing. So that ends my visit to Shenandoah, uh, three days, a bunch of hikes and overall my impressions are very good. Um, I must admit it started a little bit mediocre for me. Um, the first couple of hiking trails I did, they were nice, they were great trails, but because they were um, so enclosed in trees and other foliage, it was really hard to get a feel for the place. Uh, I do generally prefer uh, the wide open vistas of the, the bare rock parks, you know, the geology parks of the West or, you know, the Lake District in England, for example. Um, but what really did it for me here was the wildlife. Uh, on that first day in the afternoon when I saw those two rattlesnakes, uh, where they were fighting or mating, I still don't know, um, seeing bears, uh, an albino squirrel, which is quite rare, and a number of other things uh, really was what was special uh, for this park for me. So that ends my trip here, and I'm going to head off back to the airport now.